All right, since we have the, uh, the unit working now, um, I thought I would try out one of its main features here. Um, it has on the, on the side, it has a selectable switch. You can either run it on AC or you can run it on DC. On DC, you have the selection of 11 to 14 volts or 22 to 28 volts. So we're gonna set this switch to the middle and try to run it off of 12 volts. And 12 volts goes in right here on banana jacks on the, uh, on the uh, thing. So let's uh, find a place to set this. All right. Uh, let's see, we'll need a power supply and we'll need some banana jacks and on the side of the instrument, uh, we'll put a plus and the minus and there we go. All right. And we will set up the, uh, we will set up the uh, power supply to 12 volts, three amps. I hope that's enough. Um, and so we'll come over here. Let me turn my power supply on. All right, 12 volts. And then let's turn on the, uh, turn on the oscilloscope. And wow, there you go. Um, yeah, it's not too bad. It draws uh, 1.48 amps, so one and a half amps. That's not too bad. One and a half amps, 17.8 watts. That's not much for a vacuum cathode ray tube uh, oscilloscope. That's amazing, 18 watts. Anyway, there you go. You can run this thing off a car battery uh, if you are so inclined. Um, one and a half amps. Yeah, you could probably build a little lithium charger for this thing and uh, carry it around. Or one of those battery packs that outputs 12 volts. Uh, I think I actually have one of those. So you could put a, a cigarette lighter adapter on the side of this thing and a cable assembly and run it off of a, um, uh, one of those power banks, like, you know, solar powered and all that kind of stuff. I did a review on one of those ones. I still have it. It's, it's nice. Um, but yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, it's pretty amazing. I like it. I thought since I had it uh, running with battery powered, we take a look at this uh, noise on channel two and no, it's still there. So it's internal to the instrument. Um, because it comes and goes, I'm thinking it's just a leaky capacitor somewhere. Um, so maybe we can, uh, maybe we can take a look, take a look around, see if there's any assist, uh, capacitors that look suspicious. All right, we have channel one, looks really, really clean. And then let me move the scope probe over to channel two. And it looks really, really clean. So what did I fix? <laughs> I put the case back on. Um, for some reason, channel two was susceptible to picking up something and it needed to be shielded. It needed to have that top cover on. And now channel two works great too. So anyway, once again, the tech scope fixes itself.